five, four, three, two, one. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to Real Estate Podcast Show, and welcome back to those of you who are regular listeners. Uh, today is one of those really exciting days. Best kind of Mondays for me is when I get to sit down with, again, one of the amazing realtors that I've been uh, able to connect with. And again, this is you know, the world we live in now. I've been able to connect with this particular realtor online. We started having chats and basically uh, decided, you know what, it was time to sort of, you know, have sort of the official, um, official, unofficial chat on the podcast. So I want to met, welcome, uh, again, a, a great agent that I've been talking to. This is Grant Inaba. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So we got the same last initial, Indrigo and Anaba. So right. if we were in the same town, we might be a team because it sounds like one of those things. Um, so welcome to the podcast. Thanks for joining me today, Grant. Yeah, thanks so much. Uh, IND and INA. That means we'd probably be sitting right next to each other in the classroom too. Oh, right? You uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm having uh, flashbacks, not always good ones of uh, sitting in class, but yeah, I think I think we'd get along for, for that matter. I, I was uh, more more joker than uh, anything else in my class. I don't know about you. Oh man, that means I got to protect my test answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you better, you better. <laughs> so tell me a little, tell everybody because you're speaking to the world now. No pressure, but uh, tell us uh, a little bit about you. Uh, again, of course, uh, you know where you're from um what, you know what uh, what sort of got you into where you are and again uh let's find out about you grant yeah thanks so much uh my name is grant inaba uh i live in the uh san francisco bay area and uh do real estate out here i'm a real estate agent uh california native my whole life i was originally from southern california but moved to northern california in order to do uh music actually Oh, no. uh, worked in film in LA and then followed a friend up here to do music in San Francisco. And then uh, when the economy actually kind of started to drop out around 2000, uh, we call that the kind of the, the dot com era in the San Francisco Bay Area where tech is really big. Yeah. Um, I started to actually go back to school, get really into education. And uh, around 2006, I actually uh, started to become a librarian. Um, wow. As a librarian, I realized that uh, knew very knew, knew very early that. Uh, you know, wasn't going to make a whole lot of money, was thinking that maybe I should get some passive income in order to supplement the lifestyle I wanted to have. Uh, I decided real estate would be a very good, um, you know, kind of a, a second business. And uh, when the economy dropped out, uh, real estate dropped out along with it. But um, I found myself just very, very intrigued by what was going on in that in that industry and uh, switched uh, all my focus and in business into actually learning and uh, becoming a real estate agent. So you basically uh, came in at the at like the two thousand seven two thousand eight mark. You said, yeah, yeah, I started out as an investor and then finally got licensed uh, in about two thousand ten, I believe, and okay. uh, uh, started doing sales uh, ever since then. Um, so my background originally was investing and then uh, supplemented that with sales, and uh, been doing that ever since. So that's, uh, uh, that's actually a really very interesting story. And this is why I love doing this, because the fact that you're telling me, um, you know, started sort of, you know, in the music uh, realm. Um, I, I've been a guitarist since I was 13. So for me, uh -huh. I'm always uh, I always click well with musicians. Uh, yeah. And then you went into library. And of course, for me, music and books are uh, <laughs> one and the same. I used to spend my entire I, I, I was I played sports. I was, you know, I was. You know, I was I was social, whatever. But on Saturdays, this is a sort of a, a guilty pleasure of mine. I would spend the entire day in the library uh, with books stacked up to the ceiling, just like inhaling them. And yeah. then when I got bored of that, I'd go in the back where the records were and start listening to records I never had access to. So I was listening to Hendrix and The Doors and all this stuff. So I, I, I basically was like self teaching at the time in the library. So that, that was kind of an interesting connection because you've got that. Um, and then real estate for you. I, yeah, I was in, in 2000. So I sort of saw um, sort of the end of the nineties, which in Toronto was sort of bumpy. Um, and then of course we, you know, I lived through your recession, which was, you know, obviously much bigger for you guys than us. Um, so yeah. yeah, so you got into it, it officially in 2010. So you've been at it now 12 years. So congratulations. That's uh two times the average lifespan of uh, <laughs> what we do. Cause it's five years, right? If, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what, I guess that's a, 
people say. I mean, so you're um, on your second like life. It. I I, yeah. call, I call mine. I'm on my fourth life. I don't know how many I got, but I'm on my fourth, and 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 I'm and I'm still enjoying it. Um, yeah. You know, bumpy as hell, but yes, yeah, still enjoying it. Um, so yeah, so you've been doing this now for 12 years in your in your area, obviously. Um, so yeah, I guess the the next thing I would basically ask is that uh, yeah, so how, I guess for for your you know for your community for people who are listening in your area, uh, what areas I guess do you handle in? Uh, California specifically? Yeah, so specifically, I work in the East Bay, which is uh, when we, when people say East Bay, they automatically think of Oakland. Oakland is kind of like the, uh, the major city in the well, East Bay. East just Bay remember, East. people like me are going to be listening, and, and I have no idea um, you know, where, where it is. So I, I, I'm going to say basically just pretend you're talking to someone who doesn't know, uh, you know, anything about <laughs> Uh, you know, that area, because a lot of people listening will, you know, might call you and say, oh, yeah, you mentioned, you know, X area. Oh, my cousin lives there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so the East Bay is specifically east of San Francisco, which is, um, you know, where the rice aroni treats are made and things like that. Uh, yeah. uh, it's, it's where the Golden Gate Bridge is. Um, you know, that's the, uh, the tourist uh, attraction. That's the main city that, um, you know, when people say uh, the Bay Area, that's what they think of. The East Bay is basically, um, you know, a 15 minute, 20 minute drive across uh, a bridge in order to to get to the other side of the bay. Okay. Um, Oakland is there. Uh, you know, Oakland's got a very rich music history, as you know, um, history with the Black Panthers. Um, you know, great city, uh, great weather. Um, and uh, there's lots and lots to take in over there. Uh, I've got a, um, well, like I said, I, I've been working in real estate for about uh, a decade and uh I uh, have my beginnings in, in Oakland, but I've also kind of moved out to the suburbs myself and mm-hmm. um, also do business in the next counties over, which is uh, Contra Costa County and Solano County, um, in addition to Alameda County, where Oakland uh, resides. So uh, basically between those three counties, you mm-hmm. know, I've got agents that I work with. We network together in order to help each other out to share business ideas and share uh, business itself in order to refer back and forth between the counties. So a lot of times when people come to us, they say, you know, I've got help that I need in uh, real estate in Northern California. We say where, mm-hmm. and um, if it's in our immediate areas, our three counties that we work in, then we can definitely help them out. Yeah. Uh, we've got connections and resources uh, throughout San Francisco, Silicon Valley, Napa, um, uh, Marin, all the major areas uh, in the surrounding areas as well. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that again, being in real estate, you know, up here in Toronto, just a little bit North of you guys, um, many of our, you know, uh, residents here uh, are, you know, uh, investors in the U S and of course, uh, California, Texas, Arizona. Um, I think there's two more that are the big ones that, uh, that draw the Canadians. Uh, but obviously, you know, the weather has a lot to do with it and uh, you know, opportunity, uh, because over the years, a lot of people that I've sent down that way, um, you know, were basically looking for opportunities during, you know, maybe turbulent market uh, segments. And of course, again, they're, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they continue to, I think it's been a little bit less like the stats I just saw from the uh, NAR uh, showed that the uh, Canadians haven't been investing as much Uh I think the last year or something, but uh, I think that's definitely uh, when it comes back, it'll come back twice as uh, powerful just because that's how it works. You know, the people who love living there, they're, you know, they don't, they don't just stop love li- loving it. They just, you know, they just maybe couldn't, like I was telling you before we started, literally we, uh, we couldn't have met uh, over the last two years if we wanted to. Um, yeah. you know, as far as conferences and stuff like that goes. So my next question would be, what would you say was the toughest part about that transition for you? Because of course you came from, uh, again, sort of more artistic pursuits. Uh, I'm not saying li- librarian, but, um, from musician, for, from music to librarian to, uh, real estate, what would you say the toughest part was for, for that, for you? Um, you're talking about the transition into real estate. Um, yeah, that 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 transition, because uh, chances are, I mean, maybe you did sales before that, but of course, um, it's definitely a different, you know, a different sport. 
Yeah, the transition into real estate actually wasn't um it wasn't uh, in my opinion too difficult to do. Uh I was much younger back then. I was excited. I was uh I think you could say I was hungry. Um I was enjoying life a lot, you know. I was single and uh had a lot of free time and um you know, I I just think I think of it back as a very exciting period. Um a lot of times when I think about my whole life, I think of a uh, uh, you know Oh, during this time, you know, life could have been better. Uh, you know, uh, whatever uh, desert storm was happening, the Gulf War was happening, uh, yeah. the recession was happening, uh, the dot com bus was happening. Uh, when's it going to be my time? You know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, when am I going to have a, a, a time where things are going well for me? And um, I found myself, you know, during that 2012 time that things were actually starting to pick up, and I was moving along with it, and. Um, uh, I think uh, during that time, it was all very optimistic for me. So unlike other people, I think my transition to real estate was actually quite enjoyable and, um, you know, a great memorable experience. Obviously, I had to work hard. Yeah. Um, that was no, there was no question about that whatsoever. And um, I think uh, having that type of ethics, uh, whether it was, you know, born into me or taught by my family, things like that. I, uh, I definitely did work hard, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And um, to answer your question, you know, uh, it wasn't that tough, but I enjoyed it so much. And, um, you know, I think back at that time very, very fondly to the truth. Well, you know, what, Grant, and this is one of the things that I've learned from, again, um, you know, meeting with uh, so many great realtors over the years and even through the podcast is that a lot of us sort of find uh, enjoyment in this. And it's not actually exclusive to us because uh, I've even heard of, uh, uh, you know, even uh, surfers, uh, professional surfers talk about how they um, actually enjoy falling off the board. And, 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 and if you love something enough, you know, you'll, you'll get this. If you love something enough, you'll even love some of the, you know, some of the stuff that might sound like, you know, uh, you know, the rejection, for example, in our business, you know, you're, you're going to hear, you know, you're going to hear more no's than yeses, or, or, or you know, there's no way you're going to last. It's just, it's just how it works. Uh, and then getting used to that is, you know, that takes time for everybody. Um, but again, not just surfers, but you know, the, the quote by uh, Michael Jordan is, you know, you know, he missed 9,000 shots. He, uh, you know, he missed the, he missed the key shot at, you know, in 30 different games. Um, but that's the reason why he became who he was. And people don't remember those stats. I do, uh, because I, I, I think I can sympathize with the, you know, the, you know, losing, losing five listings. And then, you know, of course, getting the one that, you know, I really wanted for, you know, whatever the ratios are for us. Um, so, yeah, so it sounds like, yeah, you were able to, uh, you know, make the transition pretty smoothly. Um, and sort of, you know, overcome for a lot of people again. Yeah. That first few years, I don't know if it was for you. Uh, and, and, and I've said this before on the podcast, my first year, I, I made a whopping $7,000 and, uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was not pleasant. It was, uh, again, unexpected because I had no expectations at all, really. Cause I, I didn't know what people made in the business in year one. I just figured, okay. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. And then thankfully, it got better and it got better and everything else. But for you, um, were the first few years bumpy? Was it like smooth sailing for you? Because it's different for everybody, I find. Yeah, for me, the first few, I think that uh, that initial excitement actually carried on for many years um, yeah. into the first few years. Um, and uh, I uh, was making more and more money every year. It almost, it was, it was like compounding interest. You know, it was like I would double my salary every year or double my income every year, not salary. Um, And that was, you know, fun uh, because I had more money to do more things, Um, bought investment properties, uh, you know, uh, bought a nice car, uh, you know, bought a nice house for myself to live in, things like that. And every year was just getting better and better and better. So the first few years were great. Um, I... uh, um, think back on those years fondly too, as well. And, uh, you know, I think that, uh, a lot of what, where I'm at right now, uh, financially is because of all that hard work that I put in in the first few years. Um, yeah. and once again, you know, it was a lot of, uh, late nights, early mornings at the office, um, sleeping on the floor in order to get a, 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 a good jump on the next day. Um, all that I, I enjoyed it though. I did 
didn't matter to me. It was so much fun. And um, the learning process was so exciting. Like you said, um, and I think this is very, very important. Uh, you mentioned, um, you know, how Jordan, he took a lot of shots in order to make that one, you know, missed a lot of shots in order to make that one. Yeah. Um, for me, it was always about learning from what happened. You know, even if this was a failure, uh, take it in and then figure out, you know, why it was a failure, how we can maybe avoid it being a failure in the future if it wasn't, how do we digest that failure and move on and, you know, uh, uh, create success the next time around, optimizing every single moment. Um, and for me, that was all about um, taking in a failure and understanding why it happened and moving on from it. Um, and I think everybody should, uh, for me, that was a huge, huge thing. And for any kind of advice to anyone else, I think that, um, you know, learning from the failure, not dwelling on it emotionally and, uh, you know, maximizing that uh, incident as much as possible. That's a huge, huge thing. I, I could not agree with you more, my friend. And, and one of the things that I don't even know why I started doing this, but for some reason in my head, I thought maybe I could hack my brain into sort of being okay with the fact that let's say, you know, I, I had a bad listing presentation or, you know, a, a sale, you know, sale didn't come together after a, a busy night. I always sort of said, you know what, the next day, either, 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 you know, either way, whether, you know, it happened or it didn't, uh, you know, we're going to order pizza. And that's, that was just going to be like sort of a family. And usually the, the kind of the rule in the house is if, you know, if, if I'm busy working and I've got a late night, you know, they just order pizza and I just have it when I come back. It's, it's sort of the thing we do. Um, and then I sort of learned, you know what, if I sort of make my brain realize that, you know, the loss was again, something to learn from, you know, look back at it. And again, sort of celebrate that not dwell in it, because in the beginning, it was the other thing it was it was misery. And, you know, like, you know, what the hell just happened and, and, and you know, pissed off at myself. Um, again, human human emotions. And, 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 you know, not only, you know, am I into music, um, but I'm left handed as well. So I, I've got the wrong brain for real estate. Uh, I've got more of the, uh, you know, the artistic, uh, emotional uh, side versus the the other side. But the good thing is, um, I think, like everything else in life, you sort of you compensate for, uh, you know, what you don't have by, you know, doing well with what you can do. Um, and, and, and getting good at connecting with people. And of course, you know, focusing on relationships and being able to talk to someone like you in, in California on, on, a, on a Monday here and uh, while I'm here in Toronto and be able to sort of share these stories. So. Yeah. 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 I think the people with the opposite side of the brain and the opposite industry, uh, those are the most interesting people in my opinion, you know, if uh, you're an artistic person in an analytical world or an analytical world and artistic world or analytical person in an artistic world, uh, you, you see things so differently and you approach them so differently and you, you kind of stand out and, uh, I think that's kind of fun, actually, as long as you can survive, of course, as long as you can thrive. But, well, uh, and, and I think that's the whole thing. Once all of us, yourself, myself, everybody else that's out there doing what we're doing, um, once you find a groove and, of course, yeah. like something that you can sort of wear in and, um, you know, be very unique about, because the thing is, and I don't know about your particular area, but there's, you know, obviously there's, uh, you know, thousands and thousands of realtors in, in my city. So for me to be able to um, sort of cut my own path and sort of be different and sort of have my sort of my storyteller um, angle, which is what I've always done. I've always loved stories. I, I love the background stories of buildings. Um, you know, we've got a we've got like a loft building down here that has a connection to Al Capone. So it's something that like I've always sort of, you know, been really attracted to those stories. So, uh, you know, sort of back to your librarian days where, um, you know, I will and I still do this now. I spend at least one or two days a month like in the library, like six, seven hours uh, doing research on a home, on a community, trying to pull up stuff that isn't on Google, because, as you know, you 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 can probably be the the. The, the best verification that a lot of that stuff hasn't been uh, scanned. Some of the really old, you know, data and maps and, and letters from people back in those days. And I find these, you know, these, these, these treasures. 
uh, when I'm there. And I, and then of course, you know, I try to bring them into the storytelling and bring them into marketing and people are like, you know, they're, they're amazed because again, it just, it's, it's not stuff that floats around out there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Photography, uh, go into your photo archive. Oh my goodness. Um, our local Oakland public library, they've got an amazing photo archive and you can just see, you know, Oakland architecturally, uh, geographically, you know, as a city, the way it was so far back that you just can't see, uh, and like you're saying, stuff that uh, people scan on Google, it's uh, a finite amount of uh, photographic inventory compared yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and a lot of them think that it's all there. Like they think everything is there and, and I'll tell yeah. them absolutely not. It's absolutely not the case with, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've found. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, Grant, uh, of course, yeah, I wanted to, again, sort of get to know you a little bit, find out a little bit about you. So um, if you if you know, you know, obviously, I don't always, you know, you, you might not always have an answer for this, but what's, uh, what's next for you? What's next for your team? What sort of uh, plans do you guys have going forward into year, you know, this year, next year? Um, the decade? Uh, any, any, any exciting things you guys have planned? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, I, I think a lot of us uh, realtors are asking ourselves this right now, given the timing of the economy and the real estate market. Um, I, I think that you guys are being affected by real estate the same way we are. Um, Absolutely. I've been reading that the interest rates up in Toronto as well as it is here. Yep. Um, so it's, it's all it's all the buzz. Everybody on the ground floor, all the realtors are all sort of in on the conversation. Yeah. Um, everybody's got an opinion and again it's all good until someone you know gets upset and and you know decides that you know their opinion's better than yours and then they block you which yeah. <laughs> is just too weird for me i just i just say you know what you know go away <laughs> if if that's you cuz i mean in our job we have to be able to sort of celebrate differences so yes definitely we we're on the same page about that sorry to interrupt you yeah, so, um, you know, it's very interesting. When I was uh, much younger in this business, and uh, I think, uh, honestly, I think I was much sharper in the business back then. You know, I was really, like I said, very motivated, very hungry, very aggressive. Um, you know, back during that time, I would say to, to, to myself, and I would say out loud, too, I would say, listen, if the market shifts, then we'll just shift our conversation along with it, mm -hmm. you know, and um, we'll shift our strategy. And uh, I have... <laughs> I find myself now in this changing market, um, you know, finding challenges, you know, we actually literally have to shift now. And uh, a lot of that is changing a whole bunch of, especially marketing, um, our message uh, and our approach to real estate. So a lot of that is really infrastructural wise, uh, business wise, you know, we have to really kind of change the script now, literally. And um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Uh, Fortunately, in the Bay Area, you know, we've still got a very low inventory. Inventory is an issue. And um, I think that uh, we're still going to be a strong market. It's just going to be a little bit more competitive, I think, in order to capture the business. The buyers are not out there in the way that they were before. And the sellers still have not, um, I think, uh, gotten off the fence and decided to sell. So it's kind of an interesting uh, slow period where we just have to kind of uh, push through it and uh see what happens um yeah i'll definitely be looking forward to again our our next chat i always i always call this a work in progress or side two if you grew up with records like i did uh you're always looking forward to side two of the of, of the record and, and, and you got to get up off your ass and actually flip the record around you got to earn that uh, so with, with the podcast, obviously I always say, uh, you know, uh, especially with great guests like you, uh, and again, your team. So obviously, um, having, you know, you know, them and, uh, you know, them join me eventually as well is going to be a real treat, but, uh, I just wanted to say, thank you so much, Grant, for joining me today. Uh, what's the, I guess the best one or two ways, cause, uh, after that people will, uh, probably forget, but what are the best, uh, ways for people to reach out to you and, uh, connect with you oh it's very easy just google my name if you google my name uh g-r-a-n-t space i-n-a-b-a -A, uh, it's a b as in boy a uh you would find me very very easily um i'm basically plastered all over uh, uh, 
uh, social media at grant at good agents. I'm sorry, grant good agents. Uh, if you look for me there on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, even places like Twin, uh, Pinterest, uh, you'll find me. Um, when you search for me, you'll find all my great reviews. And uh, yeah, my phone number, and my email usually are over there as well. So, you know, it shouldn't be too difficult to find me at all. Uh, you know what, I agree. And, and, and basically, the fact that I've been, uh, you know, connecting with you uh, online, I, I know that that's the case. So um, definitely looking forward to, again, continued conversations. Uh, and hopefully one of these days, not far from now, someone will be listening from either your neck of the woods or mine uh, and say, you know what, these guys appear to know what they're talking about. Uh, and, uh, you know, they might reach out to me or you and hopefully uh, someone will make that uh, Toronto to, uh, uh, you know, your parts of California move or vice versa, because uh, I know it doesn't happen as often. I've had uh, some fun conversations with people saying, um uh, from Texas, they were saying nobody moves from Texas to Toronto. I'm like, well, they do just not often. Uh, it's <laughs> usually the other way around, but sometimes they do move up here. And I, I know a few that have. Um, so I know there's a fact, but I know it's the other way around more than likely. And I'm, I'm totally fine with that. People should live where they uh, are happiest. So once again, uh, thank you, Grant, for joining me. I really appreciate your time today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, Paul. Hello, this is Grant Inaba from the Good Real Estate team out here in the San Francisco Bay Area in Northern California. You're listening to Paul Indrigo at the Real Estate Podcast Show.